All right, we're back. My name is Seth Juarez. I'm here with the great Amanda Silver. How hey, are Seth. you? I'm doing well. So we're here at Build. Yeah. <laughs> and Build is all about building software, and it you're is. all about Visual Studio. I am. So did we just pull you off a talk or something? Uh, no, my talk was at two. Okay. Yeah, so, and then I was at the booth for a while. Fantastic. So yeah. what can people expect new in Visual Studio? I'll just let you tell us, because you sent me a note on all yeah. the stuff. It's, okay. it's a lot. I want you to take us through some of the cool stuff. And then you had a demo that you said you needed to redeem yourself. Yeah, I do need to redeem myself there? at some point. There was one demo that failed. And so I know the team was working really, really hard on it. So I want to make sure that I demo it so that we can you know, at least kind of point people to say, hey, it works. Absolutely. And then also, <laughs> your questions are very important. So please have them come in. We're going to take them live as well. So all right. So all right. let's start with uh, sort of an overview of what the new things are with Business sure. Studio. Sure, yeah. Well, let me, let me kind of give you a brief overview of what I talked about let's today. Do it. Um, so you know, I've been working at Microsoft since 2001. Wow. I, yeah, I know. Um, and I've actually been working on developer tools the whole time. That's amazing. Which is awesome. It's, it's actually an amazing career. It's sure. been really fun. But I think it's just because I find developer, working for developers so fun because every year it changes. Yeah. You know, every year there's something brand new that we need to support. Something new is happening in, in Windows or something, you know, Azure is coming along or um, now we're supporting Linux or other things like that. So every year it's, it's absolutely something different and it's been really exciting to work on. So. What I talked about today was basically four different things um, in terms of the future of Visual Studio. The first is that we're really working on improving the installation and acquisition experience. Um, and the reason for that is that you know, as we support any developer building any type of app, obviously we have a lot more things that we could install to get your dev box up and running. Yeah. Uh, probably a lot of things that, that you might not use, maybe just other users are using. Sure. And so the result is that if you install the entire you know, Visual Studio, including all of the dependencies for every workload that we could support, it could end up being a pretty massive uh, installer. Yeah. So one of the things that I showed today is we have a new installer coming for the next version of Visual Studio mm -hmm. uh, that actually I demoed on stage, demoed setup for the first time, mm -hmm. and it installed Visual Studio in about 90 seconds. Now, is it? <laughs> I'm, tell I'm, I'm like almost fainting here yeah. because I got to get these, these boxes ready for build and I installed the other Visual Studio, the older version. Yeah. It took all of Saturday because I did select all. Yeah, well, so if you install everything, then obviously you're going to, sure. you know, you're going to have a lot of dependencies. I would say about 75% of our users install the default. And the default includes a few versions of Windows. It also includes all of our web stack. Right. Um, and you know, we find that, that most users don't necessarily use all of those of components. Um, and if you're a Python developer, you might not be yeah. using either of those. Um, so you know, if we want to support Python developers in the future, we really need to kind of take a look at the way that our installation experience works. So what is it, what is it doing now? That, I mean, 90 seconds to me is like, Mind blowing, what, yeah. What is, it, what is it doing now that's different than the previous version? Uh, well, I mean, so, so one of the things that we've always had is this kind of like no, this notion of a uh, minimal shell, which is basically the, the minimum Visual Studio plus the minimum uh, set of editor mm -hmm. functionality. Um, and so we have basically the solution explorer and the team explorer and other things like that. But it's basically a code editor at that point. Right. Um, but the result, because we have TextMate bundles, which we introduced, I think, in update one, uh, you can now basically load any programming language and get syntax highlighting, coloring. Um, even in some cases, you can get various types of like um, uh, method completion or you know pretty printing kind of stuff as well. Interesting. So if you're doing like the default skinny version of Visual Studio, yeah. you're effectively getting a really good code editor. You're getting a great code editor. Yeah. yeah. And and a code editor that also includes uh, you know integrating with a source code control experience. And that's like if you're a if you're a TypeScript TypeScript dev or a yeah. Python dev yeah. or a, or a Node.js type person. That's really all you need. It is. And, um, and one of the next things that I showed was basically if you are a Python dev and you install the Python set of tools, which is about another six minutes on top of the, sure. the 90 seconds that I showed, uh, then what you can do is you can basically open any folder and just 
add a startup script and say, I want a debug based on this startup script, and the Python interpreter will run it, and That's you can awesome. actually start debugging in Visual Studio. That's awesome, and I will tell you that I did all of my schoolwork in Python, so that's awesome. really, yeah. really cool. So you mentioned four things. Yeah. We started so with that installation. Was, that was one, right? Yeah. Because, uh, because that was just, just talking about kind of the minimum install experience and what you can do with that. Okay. Um, the next thing that I showed was really that we're continuing to work on any, enabling any developer to build any kind of app. Mm -hmm. And that's where the, my demo failed. Well, so <laughs> let's, get into, let's get into any developer, any kind of app, because yeah. traditionally, people have viewed Visual Studio as, that's where I do my Microsoft stuff. Yeah, well, even more specifically, that's where I do my Windows stuff. Right. Right. So it's like if you're building a Windows application, Visual Studio is definitely the best best tool, and we continue to try to make sure that that's the case. Absolutely. Um, but now, obviously, if you want to build a web web backend, or if you want to build something on Azure, or if you want to build something for Linux or iOS or Android, um, you could do that with Visual Studio now as well. All right. So why don't you talk us through what the yeah. demo was going to be, sure. and then we'll Show see what you me. got. Yeah. 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 So what I was going to show is, you know, obviously Satya had a big announcement today uh -huh. with, uh, with Ubuntu and Windows 10. Um, but what I'm going to show is basically Ubuntu running as a VM on, on Windows. So uh -huh. this is not the kind of, you know, the shell, the shell yeah. integrated scenario. Um, this is really just, if you see here, and I'm probably going to have to enter my password one more time. But this ABC is, 123, right? Is that yeah, corporate approved? Exactly. There you go. This is my uh, Ubuntu instance. Uh -huh. And so we just introduced a new extension. This is Visual Studio 2015 Update 2. OK. Um, and we introduced a new extension that allows you to build a C++ project that can target Linux. So like the ELF kind of, is that what it is? I mean, it's a different binary system. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and actually, what it does is it remotes the, the compilation to the Ubuntu, and then it runs GCC and, and GDB there. So it's like the real, like. Uh, when I went to school, it was all Linux writing C, but I didn't have the benefit of using Visual Studio, right? I know. Well, I was the same way. When I went to school, I was raised on Java, and yeah. I used Emacs most of the time. I know. Right? It, was, it was nice, but not nice <laughs> right. like Visual Studio. And, right? and when I came to Microsoft and I started using Visual Studio, I was just kind of stunned. Yeah. I mean, this was 2001, right. so this is way back in the day, but at the same time, like, you know, IntelliSense was something I had never experienced before, <laughs> it, right? It's a crutch now. I use right. it all the time. Exactly. All right, so, so let's see what we're doing. So, so what I can do with this is I can create a, um, a Blink LED, which is basically based on the Raspberry Pi, or a console application for Linux, or an empty project. But in this case, what we have is an OpenGL project. Um, so this is like your typical spinning cube OpenGL yes. project, right? Um, and so you can see that it has all different kinds of stuff. In I, it, I right? remember doing this stuff too, and it, it's different. This is very different than what you would do with like DirectX, for example. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's and, a different thing. And it doesn't it's work on Windows. It doesn't work on Windows. Um, so now I'm just going to try to run it in the remote debugger, and we can see it. It's working because yeah. I entered debug mode. So now let's go and actually check and look at the Ubuntu instance, and we actually see it running. See, that's crazy to me, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I should it's have put our, our, we should have put our, we love Linux thing up here. Someone's <laughs> got to throw me the penguin up here. The, um, because this is amazing. You know, in my, in my demo rehearsal notes, I put a note to myself to bask in the glory of the spinning cube because that's how I always feel about OpenGL demos. Well, it turns out, it turns, <laughs> you you went beyond, right? Because it's usually the triangle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so we went full cube full on cube. this full cube. because, and so this is running from Visual Studio. It's attached somehow into Ubuntu. Yep. So let's go back here, and let's just go and set a breakpoint real quick. So let me just um, set a breakpoint. And we actually hit the breakpoint. Are we, oh, are we, can we see what's inside of those things? Yeah, so we can see that the alpha uh, is set to 1,000. So if we bring this down, actually, let me just uh, see if I can minimize this a little bit and bring it down. Um, it stopped spinning. It stopped spinning, so we're definitely stopped. And let me try one more time little bit of a mouse thing. But what I want to show you is that I can actually update this value. So I can go and edit the value and change it to like 2,000, for example. And then just hit F5, 
and we should see that it actually rotates. So it's actually applying, applying that. That's so pretty amazing. Edit it. Yeah. So I had to show this to you because uh, I felt like everybody wanted to see this. So Jeez. yeah. That is amazing because now, look, I'll be <laughs> honest with you. I took an AI class yeah. and we had to implement Minimax and C++. Completely bombed that. Yeah. <laughs> I, it would have been so much nicer if I could have done this in Visual Studio. I could have had the tooling to see what was going on instead of having all these C dot or C out stuff. Yeah, and it's the great, it's the same great, you know, experience that you expect from Visual Studio in terms of the integrated debugger and all of the editing functionality and all that kind of stuff. And so. by the magic of television, the <laughs> Linux person has just appeared. Ah, up in very front. nice, very nice. Hello, That's Penguiny. Awesome. <laughs> so what is it? What is it actually doing? Is it? Is it? How is it attaching to a process on a VM? It's just using the GDB, okay. and um, and it's it's attaching to it just like it's any kind of remote remote, you know, uh, server. I see. So it's just like remote debugging. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing. And so now, if you are at school writing these kinds of applications with yeah. OpenGL, yeah. unlike you, me, you can use Visual Studio. You might get a good grade. Go, in go check out the VS Community Edition, and, and you could start doing this. And that's, that brings an interesting point, right? Because people are thinking, well, I'm a student, I can't buy this. Yeah. Well, you don't have to. That's right. So, you know, one of the things that we started doing last year is we made the the version of Visual Studio, which has basically all of the different things that you'd want to be able to support. Um, available uh, in in a dual mode license, right. so that if you're a student or you're working on open source or if your team is less than five, then you can actually use the community version of, of Visual Studio, awesome. um, which has the same exact functionality as the professional version. Okay. Yeah. So we we did install. Yeah. We did. We want you to write any code. So any code, any any dev, you know, right. any app. Um, but the next thing that's most important is productivity. Right. Of course. Right. Because like you. You might be excited that you can do Linux development, but a lot of people aren't necessarily yeah. going to target Linux. Um, and so it's just really important that we continue to work on productivity and making that better. So what have we done in that area? So there were, so what I, what I tried to share was kind of our vision for um, developer inner loop, like how we want to evolve the developer inner loop. So and by the, inner loop, you mean by code, compile, or whatever? Yeah, exactly. So like what a developer does, you know, eight hours a day. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's be honest. Maybe six hours a day for More some like of you guys. More like four. There's yeah. some YouTube video watching going on. Yeah, exactly. Going on right, 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 right. And then there's lunch, yeah. and there's you know pre martini happy sure, hour. Sure, of course. Uh, but but uh, when you're coding, uh, you know we the the traditional dev inner loop kind of most people think about as including edit, debug, um, test. Right. Uh, what's the last one I'm thinking of? Edit, debug, Edit, debug compile. Test, compile. Of course. Right. For the, some languages, <laughs> compile isn't yeah. a thing yeah. necessarily. But, um, but so for edit, really our goal is to make sure that you can learn about what you, the code that you might need to write, mm -hmm. uh, that you can author the code that you need to write, and even make massive changes to the code that you need to write right. without leaving the keyboard. I see. Because for most developers, they really don't like using mice. Yeah. They really want to be as productive as they possibly can be just with hotkeys and being on the keyboard. So I see. So we worked on, we've, I, I showed a whole bunch of stuff that allows you to do that, um, including, you know, we have experimental editor features in C++, uh, which is another extension that you can go mm -hmm. get, uh, and options that you can enable. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a whole bunch of new style rules that you can apply I in see. the new version of Visual Studio for C Sharp code. OK. Um, so that if you, let's say you don't want to have People, you you don't want to um, use this for a, a variable for sure. a, a, an no. identifier, a member. Right. Um, then you can actually have that applied as a style rule and get a warning or even an error if you I want. See. If you don't want to, if you want to make sure that everybody writes method names in Pascal case, uh, you can also have a code style rule for that. So lots of different code style rules for C sharp. Uh, the next thing I showed was basically the the Bing Developer Assistant. Mm -hmm which allows you to actually go and search the internet for code snippets. Oh my goodness. Yeah. No more Stack Overflow for me? Yeah. Well, I still think there's a, <laughs> there's a place for Stack there's Overflow. There's always a place course, for Stack right? Overflow, of course. But in terms of finding code snippets that you want to use, you can copy and paste directly from that into your code, obviously without, without having to use your mouse, right? Um, and select it and use it. And then I showed a whole bunch of new um, uh, 
you know, quick actions, basically mm -hmm. autocorrect features that allow you, when you hit control dot, it comes up if you have an error. Is that the light bulb type the thing? The light bulb yeah. thing, yeah. And so, uh, so one of them that I showed is, you know, you can add a using for a, for a, a namespace sure. or a, something like that. Um, but the new one that I showed is I can actually add a NuGet reference directly from source, just with my keyboard. Wow, you know what? Someone <laughs> just asked a question about really? that. James said, is the feature that finds code for NuGet packages version aware, which is literally awesome, will it find the code for something prior to the most recent version? If so, how does it do that? Uh, it is literally awesome. Of course, so <laughs> yes, yes, it is awesome. Uh, so there's actually two different options for it. One is that if you can find the latest version. Mm -hmm. um, the other is that you can install a specific version that you might have a dependency on. Is it going to like have the enumeration of the? Uh, it could. And it, it could. could yeah. It could. Yeah. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't actually surface that directly, but uh, but. Because yeah. I mean, and the reason by, why I say, by default, the default is basically to get the latest version. Because when I, when, I, when I say that, it's because the, the new project.json files and sort of the .NET Core, I'm yeah. sorry, the ASP.NET Core stuff, when you go in there, it completes and it says, here's the versions that you can install yeah. for certain types of packages. Yep. It, it might be a similar kind of yep, thing. Yeah, exactly. It is, it is similar to that. The okay. default is to get you the latest. Though. Got it. Yeah. Because, it, because you're optimizing for the fastest thing. Yep. Exactly. Okay. That so, makes sense. and then after that, um, I went in and, and showed some, how you can actually go and look at the source that that might have come from, even if that's in GitHub. I so see. I can actually hit F12 on something that's defined in GitHub and go and it you know, load the page it'll up. load that page. It'll show you all of the source, including comments, um, and I can even do a find all references into GitHub. I think we need to let that <laughs> soak in, people. <laughs> Find all references from source code on GitHub. Yeah. That's amazing. That's pretty cool. And so that's the productivity side that you were mentioning. Yeah. Anything else on the productivity side before we move to the fourth and final? Uh, well, the last thing that I showed was a little bit of a ditty on the, uh, the new C Sharp interactive uh, mm -hmm. window, the REPL. Um, and I basically showed in a test project how you can initialize the, the interactive mode uh, with that project context so that I can immediately start running tests in the context of the interactive mode. And wow. then I also showed that we are working on a new IntelliSense feature in Dev 15. Now this one's not available yet of course. Um, in Visual Studio 15. Uh, I, I had bits patched at 6 a.m. this morning to get this to work. Nice. But, uh, <laughs> this one shows how we're working on the statement completion list so that rather getting the huge long list, which is, I think it's 2,000 different types of members in a, in a WPF-like uh -huh. default in, uh, instance, you can actually start to filter it on classes or interfaces or methods or properties or events um, or delegates right. by using, again, your, hot, your hotkeys. So we're going. We're not going full Vim, right? We're going somewhere <laughs> in the middle. Well, right? the, the thing that I love about it is it's very visual. Right. So, so it's like you don't want your you don't want your your hands to be interacting right. as though it's like a consumer client application. But the experience is really a very rich rich experience that, and that's kind of one of the benefits of having an immersive. Cool. Um, you know, development environment. Absolutely. So let's move to the fourth thing before sure. we take some questions. Looks yeah, like yeah. there's a lot of them. Well, the last thing that I ended up covering was basically how important feedback is to us. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we have a new feature in both Visual Studio Update 2 as well as, uh, as, well as Visual Studio 15, which allows you to see trending feedback so that when you hit that little, um, that little icon that's up yeah. at the right next to yeah, the yeah. quick launch, you can basically get feedback from there. Um, but you can, in addition, as you're doing that, you can see the feedback that other people have given. That might be similar. So that if you have an issue, let's say you're, I don't know, you, um, you, you want to suggest something around the XAML designer, or you're having a, a surprising experience when you're using the interactive REPL, um, you can actually go and see if, if somebody else like Seth right. entered that. And then rather than entering your own issue, you could just plus, plus one. one. Love it. Yeah. All right. So we went through the installer. We went through the any code, whatever you want to write. O open full. Oh, develop it for any uh, yeah, yeah. any any developer, any app. Any developer, any app. Then we went into the sort of productivity still key. Yep. Yep. And then we went into feedback. We want your feedback. Yeah. Yeah. And I even showed some behind the scenes uh, of how we actually use that feedback to prioritize things like fixing bugs. 
Awesome. All yeah. right, well, we have five minutes, so it's time yeah. for some questions. Steven sure. says, just installed the VS Preview, installed great, but don't see any UWP C Sharp framework. Is right. that coming soon? Uh, yes. So, so the first installer, basically today when you get uh, Visual Studio 15, you can install it in two ways. One is just with the traditional installer, which has all of the workloads that we've Right. We support and will continue to support. And the other, which has um, just a few of the workloads that we've been able to enable in that mode. I see. Um, and so we'll continue to work on enabling all of the other workloads. And by the time we ship, we'll have all of them. So what you're saying is that if you if you install with sort of a, a, a small, you're just doing pure editor, is there a way you can add workloads later? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so the point is that the minimum install is just that, that thing that allows you to be a good code editor. Right. But if I want Python or Windows Got tools it. or Unity or something like that, I can also check that box and install. Got it. Next question: How support? How will the Visual Studio upgrades be supported? If you install, I think we just answered this. If uh, you install Lightweight and realize later you want something bigger, no, is an uninstall required? Not at all. So, um, so, so first of all, we will be able to update the installer itself, which is pretty cool because yeah. we can actually add workloads. Uh, you know, without you having to do anything. I see. Um, and then the additional thing is, if you realize that you need something bigger, that's the whole point of this. We really want to make it re-entrant, so that if you realize down the road that all of a sudden you want to, you know, you're a Windows developer and you want to start doing, I don't know, Python development, or you want to take a look at F Sharp, you can actually. Uh, you can actually go back very easily and just add that into it's your It's like a tools, add new workloads or something. Uh, it's, we actually have a new client UI for the installer. That's awesome. Yeah. And the thing is that you're updating this thing also. All the time. Which yeah. is, it's kind of cool. will be very agile. All right, uh, Joel says, will VS Code gain more Visual Studio features for non-Windows users? Yes. Oh. Yeah, of course it will. Uh, because they're, they're constantly working on that all the time, right? Yeah, so I mean, VS Code is designed to be a cross-platform editing experience uh, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So it's always designed with you know, Windows and uh, Linux and Mac developers. Awesome. Uh, another one uh, from Joel. Uh, currently using standard Visual Studio for programming, C Sharp as a CS major. Will VS Code be the tool for novices leading to the usage of standard Visual Studio in the future? Is it one or the other, or no, it doesn't feel like I mean, it like doesn't that. necessarily have to be. I mean, our, our goal is that VS Code is really optimized for the code-focused and debugging experience, and that the Visual Studio you know, full IDE is kind of designed to be an IDE. It's the right. cockpit for everything that you might need. Awesome. Next one, concerning Visual Studio installation, does a new installer do a better job at completely removing an old Visual Studio version when it is Well, removed. you tell us. So one of the things about this new installer is it doesn't touch the GAC, it doesn't touch nice. the registry. Uh, so you know, our intent is that it's it's very very clean and it's very isolated. Um, but obviously, we need people to you know test it and let try it out and, yeah. and let us know. Yeah. Uh, next one, you said a short time between releases. Is there any chance this will carry on after releases like with the Windows Insider preview? Like, how is this being released? Yeah. Yeah, I would say that you know we expect to be very agile. We want to bring things online as we can. Um, so I don't, I don't think we have any specific kind of timeline in mind. Just like with the Windows, the Windows Insider preview, like Got it. Um, you know, they don't have any specific dates for when I a particular don't. version is going to launch. And so uh, we're going to release things as they come online. So is there a way to do this now? If can I go online and look at the preview for? Is oh yeah, yeah. So if you go to aka.ms whack vs next, mm -hmm. uh, then then you can see that there are two install experiences. One is the traditional installer, that's on the left, and the other is the new installer experience, which is on the right. And you can actually install both if you want to take a look at both. That's awesome. Yeah. So we have about 60 seconds left. Sure. What do you want to tell developers that are considering looking into Visual Studio? What do you have to say to them? Have fun. I yeah. mean, if you haven't tried it before, I think you know, Visual Studio is an awesome developer environment. And you know, it's almost like, like waking up. Yeah. It's kind of been like our home for a yeah. while. <laughs> Literally your home because you've been working yeah. on it. My home because I started you know, with Visual Studio with VB6, and then I got into the Visual Studio 2003, and I've been using it ever since. It feels like we're getting slimmer, more agile, yeah. and more accepting overall. Yeah, absolutely. Languages. And I think, I think you'd be surprised at all of the different types of apps you can build. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Thanks, Seth. Again, we're here at Build 2016, and I think that's a wrap for today. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow at 8.15 with our show open. We're going to open for the keynote again with some cool guests. And then we have lots of stuff coming, so stay tuned tomorrow. We'll see you at 
8.15 a.m. Thanks for watching and until tomorrow.